What is going on, everybody in Wrestling Review Society's Facebook page, YouTube page, and twitch.tv slash heel Kevin. Guys, can you hear me? Hmm. Oh, there we go. Like I was saying, welcome everybody from Wrestling Review Society's YouTube page, Real Pro Wrestling's YouTube page, and twitch.tv slash heel Kevin. Guys, we have another amazing pro wrestling interview for you guys tonight. We're going to be sitting down with former Lucha Underground World Champion and Lucha Underground Gift of the Gods Champion, Marty the Moth, a.k.a. Martin Casals. Um, But guys, just before we get started, I want to take a quick chance to thank all of our amazing sponsors who make this show happen each and every time. We are currently waiting on Marty to do his raid. He is going to be raiding straight over to our Twitch account, um, and then he'll pop in. So he's not here yet. He's still live on his channel. He should be here within the next uh, few minutes. Uh, but while we wait on Marty, guys, if you have any questions for him whatsoever, feel free to flood that comment section. Um, we will get to some of your guys' uh, viewer questions as we go on. Um, and with that being said, I want to take a chance to thank our amazing sponsors, first of which being A-Rock Designs. This is my wife's custom business. She made me this kick-ass Bullet Club Tumblr. Um, if you guys want to get any custom merchandise made, whether it be tumblers, shirts, hoodies, hats, whatever the case may be, Go to arocdesigns.com or Eric Designs on Facebook and place your orders today. Also, guys, you can get all of our merch. You can get all of our merch at rest, or storefrontier.com slash wrestling review society. For all of your Heel Kevin merch or um, wrestling review society merch. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, guys, we're just going to wait on Marty to show up. He should be here in the next few minutes. Guys, if you are watching on our Twitch channel, hit that follow button. Hit the host button. Let's get some people in here. Share this out on your, your Twitters, your Twitches, your Discords, wherever you guys share at because we are currently trying to get to 1,000 followers. Once we do, guys, we're going to have a couple belt giveaways for you all. Um, we're going to have a couple belt giveaways for you guys to uh, enjoy. Four people are going to win a championship from this channel. All you have to do is hit that follow button to be eligible. If you follow our channel, you are entered one time. If you subscribe to our channel, you are entered three times to win. So, guys, follow the channel, subscribe if you can, and I will. See, and uh, we're going to have ourselves a little bit of a giveaway. I'm still waiting on Marty to pop up, guys. So, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and let those roll. Um, what's going on, Immortal? What's going on, uh, Clown Prince? Uh, Tank, Alizé, thank you all for showing up. Are we at a thousand? Have we already hit a thousand followers? Let me go and check really quick. It's still showing 979 on my end. Still showing 979 on my end. Um, So I don't think we've quite hit a thousand yet. Just waiting on Marty to pop up. Just sent him a message letting him know that we are ready for him to uh, come on in. Um, so how's everybody dating? Uh, this, uh, this is a little different for me. Um, I'm not used to starting the show without my guest, but he insisted that uh, he rated us. Question, what was, what was it like feuding with uh, Phoenix and Santos? Definitely going to get into all of that stuff. I want to talk to him about his time in Ring of Honor, or not Ring of Honor, but... Um, Lucha Underground, Impact, he even did some work for WWE, um, AEW Dark, he's faced Jungle Boy, Brian Cage, Matt Seidel. Um, he also went to the Nightmare Factory, uh, where obviously Cody and QT Marshall School. So I'm really looking forward to uh, getting into all of that stuff with him as well. Um, I'm watching some wrestling on YouTube of Sim Bodie versus Zach Monstar versus Sean Hawley. Yo, Simbody is so awesome. Simbody is such a great, great mind of wrestling. I absolutely love watching that guy work. <clears throat> uh, Rob, everything is good today, man. Everything is going just fine. Just waiting on our guest of the evening to pop up. Marty the Moth will be joining us momentarily, very, very soon. He just put up his uh, stream ending sign. Uh, so it looks like he's jumping off his stream and getting ready to come in here. Let me get my... Uh, my good old-fashioned notepad pulled up. I normally don't do notes, but um, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot to cover, and we also have a very fun game for you guys. 
we're going to have a game between Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Casals, Marty and his wife, to see who knows the other one better. Um, it was a game that I pitched to them, and they both were more than happy to uh, entertain the idea. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a really fun time, guys. It's going to be an absolutely amazing time. Um, he should be jumping on here very shortly, just wrapping up his stream. Hmm. Lucha Underground fucking go. Let's go. I was such a fan of Lucha Underground. Um, I remember when Marty first came out. Marty kind of struck me. Okay, so he just hit us with that raid. We're going to have a bunch of raiders coming in. Uh, thank you all for being here so much. If you are here for the Marty interview, you are in the right place. We are just waiting on him to check his email. Click on that link and jump on over here. Guys, if you are here from the raid, if you are here from the raid, hit that follow button. We are having a massive, massive giveaway when we hit two, when we hit 1,000 followers. See these belts behind me? As Marty hit it too earlier, I work for a belt-making company. There's about 20 different belts behind this camera. We're going to be giving away four belts. Four lucky winners are going to receive a belt absolutely free from me. But we have to hit 1,000 followers first. Um, so once we hit that 1,000 follower mark, everybody who follows me is going on the wheel. We're going to spin the wheel. The first four people to come up, they want a belt. If you follow my channel, you're entered one time. If you subscribe to my channel, you are entered three times. So uh, the difference between you winning a belt and not winning a belt could literally be the difference between a sub and a follow. So uh, definitely follow the channel and subscribe if you can, guys. Uh, we're just going to hang out for a few minutes waiting on Marty to get in here. Um, wow, we got a bunch of people in here from uh, Marty's uh, raid. 105 people. Thank you all so much. Um, we're going to get into a whole bunch of stuff. We're, we're going to pin uh, Marty against his wife a little bit later in a, in a pretty fun game that I think you guys are really, really going to like. Um, like I said, we're going to figure out who knows the other one better. Um, you hear it all the time. Couples saying that they know more about the other yada, yada, yada. We're going to put that to the test and we're going to see who the true leader of the house of Casals is. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for being here. Hit that follow button, guys. I cannot stress that enough. Hit that follow button. Once it comes time for us to start giving away these belts, if you don't hit that follow button, there's only one way to guarantee that you are not going to win, and that is simply by not following. Guys, host the chat, share it out, send it to your friends, let's get some people in here, let's get a 1,000 followers, and we're going to have four absolutely free championship belt giveaways. Just waiting on Marty to pop in, guys. Hope everybody's having a great day. Thank you all for uh, tuning in for this interview. Um, wow, there's a lot of people in here. Thank you guys so much for this. This is this is absolutely awesome. Um, and a huge shout out uh, to Marty for the raid, going that extra mile uh, to get people to come in here. I was in the last part of his stream. Um, guys watching those fail army videos, those things get me every single time. Those things are absolutely freaking hilarious. Um, I know he was talking about the belts earlier, the Power Ranger helmet. We're going to get into all that stuff. I wore this shirt strictly because I knew um, Marty was a Power Ranger fan, uh, much like myself. I grew up on Power Rangers through the early and late 90s. I watched every series, my absolute favorite being uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Then you had like Lost in, Gal or Lost in Space. Uh, the Lost Galaxy or Power Rangers in Space, The Lost Galaxy, and then Wild Force were some of my other favorite ones. Absolutely love those. Uh, hello, Kevin. Glad to drop back in. I'm glad you're here, man. Thank you all so much for being here. So, guys, if you have any questions for Marty and you haven't been here before, we do take live viewer questions. You simply type your question and ask it. Uh, type your question in the comment section. I can throw it up here on the screen like this, and uh, we'll get to all of your viewer questions or as many as we can within the time restraint. I do want to be respectful of Marty's time. I don't want to have him here for, you know, the next three or four hours. Um, so given the uh, time constraint, we will get to as many questions as we can. AEW or WWE? I'm a much bigger fan of AEW right now. Right now, I'm a much bigger fan of AEW. In my belt collection, I have every single AEW belt. I have the women's, the world, the red and black TNT I have the tag strap, and then I have a Brody Lee custom tribute title. Um, and I have the uh, white strap, <clears throat> the white strap TNT on the way. 
Um, I do work for a belt making company. So if you guys are in the market for any belts or anything like that, all you got to do is uh, follow me on my Twitter. If you're watching on my Twitch account, just um, exclamation point Twitter. We'll bring up my uh, Twitter account. And you guys can message me there if you're in the market for any custom belts. But guys, I have been rambling long enough. Our guest of honor is finally here. Um, I cannot wait to sit down and talk to this man about everything that I have written down. And then we're going to have a really fun game coming up to see, like I said, we're going to see who knows the other one better. Is it going to be Mr. or Mrs. Casals? Uh, leave your comments in the comment section for who you think is going to win that matchup, who knows each other better. But guys, without any further ado, please help me in welcoming my guest, former Lucha Underground world champion and gift of the gods champion, the man himself, Mr. Martin Casals, a.k.a. Marty the Moth. Marty, what's up? Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? I am great, man. Thank you so much for that massive raid. Yeah, man. I, I figured I got a massive raid from a group of uh, my buddy Tangent. Uh, he mm -hmm. brought over, I think, 150 or something like that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to hang out with these guys. And then I might as well just raid on a hill, Kevin, and pass the love along. So okay, awesome so people connecting with awesome people. Absolutely, man. And I, I was actually a little bit worried. I was like, man, he's bringing over his whole following. They're going to know the answers to all the questions I'm going to ask already. But to hear that I was a raid from somebody else restores a little bit of my faith. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, Marty, I've been doing my homework on you um, leading up to this interview. And one thing that I have found time and time and time and time again, how often is it that people actually get your last name right? One out of every ten. <laughs> I thought out of every ten. I thought it was very funny or, or ironic, rather, that you wrestled in AAA and a Mexican wrestling company couldn't pronounce a Mexican last name. It's a Mexican name. I was hoping, man. I'm in Mexico. I'm like, this is Mexico City. They know how to say a Mexican name. I get up there at the top rope. There's, I think, six thousand people at that venue. I go like this, like Marty Cashu. <laughs> And I just look back there. I didn't know which guy to like yell at, but uh, Marty Cashew was definitely not it. It's Casaus. Marty Casaus, like this is the house of Casaus. Just kidding. This is the war room, but that's what my <laughs> stuff is called over on my Twitch channel. But uh, well, you, not very often do people get my name right. You know what? A little bit later, I was talking to you know you and your wife throughout your stream. A little bit later, we're going to find out who the true leader of the house of Casaus is. I'm really looking forward to that one. I think I got um, I got. Four rounds, three questions a piece. They progressively get harder. And uh, we're going to see who knows the other one better. You excited for that one? Not really. I'm going to get my ass kicked. <laughs> She's going to keep, like, I know her, but she doesn't know herself. Like, I can ask her what her favorite restaurant is because it's like my favorite restaurant. I like this from Olive Garden. I like this from this Mexican restaurant. I like this from this. So she doesn't have a favorite anything. And so, like, She's she I'm I'm easy. I'm simple. Like my whole life's on the internet. People like I'm I'm a very simple dude. I'm I'm a big kid. I'm an open book. She's gonna <laughs> kick my ass probably in this, but I'm excited for it either way. Oh man, I'm I'm really, really looking forward to it. But before that happens, let's go and get to know a little bit about you for the people who don't know or the people who only know you uh from Lucha Underground Clown Prince. I see your question. I am gonna get to that one just a little bit later. So sit tight for me, bud. Um but, you know, Marty, you have been, maybe not so recently, but uh, you've been, you suffered an injury and you have bounced back so miraculously from the, I think you're in the best shape that I've ever seen you in. Your physique looks great. Your gear looks great. Um, kind of talk to us about your injury and how you went about, because normally when people get injured, they battle with this. Is this going to be it for me? How do I bounce back? You pretty much look like you just, there was no other option. You were bouncing back. How did you find your way out of that injury? And what was your recovery like? Um, so I actually got injured streaming. So be careful, streamers. <laughs> this shit is dangerous. Um, it's I was not actually, all it's cracked up to be. That's right. You could get injured on this job. Um, I was lifting weights. Ugh, being all tough. Then I set the weights down and my dog looked at me and shook his little butt. And I'm like, you're adorable. So then he started jump running at me and I'm like, I'm going to hug the hell out of this dog. I hug him and I'm so happy because my dogs are the best things in the world. I go left, <laughs> I go right. And when I go right, my L4, my L5, and my spine decide to pop out of it. Oh, God. And then so I can't do anything but let go of my dog and do a timber like a cartoon. 
to fall over. And then that's where I'm like checking, like I can feel my legs. Cool. I can wiggle cool. my toes. Wiggling my toes. Yeah. And like I fell off screen. So I'm like rubbing up my side. Like, okay, I just got feeling and stuff. But what happened is I herniated my L4 and my L5. Uh, it took me two years to get back to going. I, I tried everything under the sun that you could think of for recovery. Like I laid on a bit of nails once. I guess cause some Russian girls told another guy that it worked real well. And I'm like, if it worked real well for him, whatever, I'm doing it. So uh, chiropractors, everything under the cryotherapy, um, a lot. There was cupping. There was uh, the ones where they stick a needle in you and electrocute you. What's that one? Um, is that electroshock? Electroshock? Electroshock. Oh, we did a lot of TENS unit stuff. Um, I ended up paying uh, $9,000 for stem Holy cells. Holy hell. Um, it, it was a lot because I couldn't physically walk. I remember going to a WrestleMania party, and I love to... I love to have a good time. We'll say that. I love to have a good time, and I... I kind of got that from your Instagram. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right, Marty? And on social media. <laughs> <laughs> um, but long story short, I, I worked really hard. And I did a lot of things because what else would I rather do than what I'm doing in my life right now? Um, I did the stockbroking thing for 15 years before this, and I hated every single minute of it until I could get in the car and drive 15 hours to a show, and that's – what I waited for all weekend. So I don't want to go back to hating my life and working for the weekend. So what better thing to get back in the best shape of my life, use this time to, uh, to, to get to where I need to be. And here I am. So I, I worked really hard. So I appreciate, I appreciate you noticing. I, yeah, man, like I said, this is probably the best shape I've ever seen you in. And um, it, it's a true testament to your willpower and, you know, one thing, not trying to make you relive your injury or anything like that, but two years is a very long time to have to fight back from something. Did you ever feel like, is it is it worth still wrestling or was it always, I'm going back to pro wrestling? Uh, it was always, I'm going back to pro wrestling um, because I did this so long where I was doing pro wrestling as the side hustle mm -hmm. while doing my job. And, and then it just got to the point where that – I was doing wrestling more than that. And then I don't want to go back to that again. Um, it was always, I want to go back to wrestling. I, I, I want to go back to making content. I want to go back to streaming. I love streaming. Like I'm going to stream after my wrestling career. I know I can't wrestle forever, but in my head, um, I did have thoughts of, is this it? Am I going to recover from this one? Am I going to be able to come back um, so that I could be a hundred percent and not be, that guy who can't move anymore, but trying to do a drop kick. Um, I worried about that. And uh, that's actually why I signed up for uh, the nightmare factory. So I could kind of test mm -hmm. that, prove that to myself. So, yeah. And that's, that's exactly where I was going to go with next man, because we all see you as, you know, Marty, the moth, you've held world titles, you've held championships just about everywhere you went. And you made the decision to go to a wrestling school. Um, a decision that maybe not a lot of people quite understand, myself included. Um, so, I mean, you kind of just hinted at it. How beneficial, you know, you were this TV guy. You were mainstream, AAA, Lucha Underground, um, a few things with TNA and WWE. You were mainstream, and you made the decision to go back to wrestling school. How much more did you learn going back to school, or was it just a refresher course for you? I mean, it was definitely a good refresher course. I did pick up things like, oh, this is a good idea. Um, most of what I've learned was like doing matches in front of them and like hearing from Glacier. I don't know if you watched WCW, but I was a WCW mm -hmm. guy. Uh, Glacier was the coach there. Uh, Luther from AEW was a coach there. QT Marshall and Cody Rhodes. Um, but I got to work most with Glacier. It was just like, I got most of my information from doing a match in front of them and be like, well, what about doing this instead? I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Like, so it was a lot of, I know how to do the mechanics of it. Yeah. Um, but there are better storytellers there to help me tell a better story. The psychology so, of it. The psychology of it. Yes. Um, and like we talked about earlier, after an injury where I couldn't walk for so long, going to that school, it wasn't a question in my head anymore. If can I come back anymore? Can I still do this? Can 
Yeah, and if it was, hey, I can't like I can't do really uh, nip ups anymore. I loved mm-hmm. doing nip ups. I thought it was cool as shit every time my nail did. QT Marshall hit it the other day. And he looked like a badass, and he, he smiled like a shit eating grin. It was great. I don't look like QT Marshall, Marty. He straight up look like QT Marshall, I don't brother. Look like QT you, Marshall, man. Hey, chat. Does he look like QT Marshall? I didn't. I did that. it all the time. Do you? Yes. See? I am not crazy. <laughs> well, I play crazy on TV. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about Marty's nip, or not Marty's, but QT's nip up and and how you used to love doing them. I used to love doing them, yeah. So, um, but now I know if I do that, it really throws a sciatica. Look, That's look what you did. Look what you did, Marty. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm just throwing the information out there. BB people are deciding whether they agree with me or not. <laughs> oh snap. Okay, if if you agree with me, put a yes. Heel Kev- Heel Kevin is a love child between QT Marshall and Miro. Ooh. All right. <laughs> oh my god. The shock oh. master. <laughs> so but I learned what I could do and couldn't do. Like if I hip up right now, I have crazy sciatica and I'll shoot down my leg, and that would suck. So mm-hmm. I don't hip up anymore. But I can still I know what I can and know what I can't do. And that and now that question is answered for me. I was able to create connections there with AEW that uh maybe I wouldn't have had before that, even though I already know half the roster from Lucha Underground. Um and, and it was good just for me, just to, to it, it was a test for me. It was it was a good thing for me. Now, is it true that when you went to the uh nightmare factory, and then we're gonna get into your wedding because you kind of went you had to move to Atlanta for three months while coming up on your wedding. Well, all this other madness is going on. So we're going to dive into a little bit of this just before we move on. Um, but I want to talk to you about your work ethic um, because, correct me if I'm wrong, you were placed in the advanced class right away. Cool. But even though you were in the advanced class, you still showed up early and were taking notes from Cody's class with the beginners, the guys who never locked up. Why, why did you feel the need to still attend these classes um, that you clearly were more advanced then. Um, it's like going back and watching a movie that you love. Like probably one of my favorite movies is Avengers Endgame. And, and every time I go back and watch it, I pick up something different. Mm-hmm. And in uh, and, and wrestling, I've just been doing stuff for so long that just is second nature. So hearing it like take an arm, let's put it up here. That'll help you so you can pick them up for learning different ways other people do it. Maybe I'll pick something up. Also, I moved there right before my wedding. So, like, I might as well, I I paid for it. I might as well get the most out of my experience and learn from some of the best in the business, like Cody Rhodes, QT Marshall, etc. So, like, the information is there. Otherwise, I'm just sitting in my my, uh, uh, rental property, just, like, twiddling my thumbs until practice. Might as well get the most out of my experience, keep learning, and and, uh, be the best I can when I get the most out of my experience, basically. Just take it for everything it's worth, man. Absolutely. I I, I truly, truly respect that about you because there's not a lot of people. There's a lot of people that walk around. I've been doing this for a while, and I'm not going to say any names, but I've interviewed some very smug, um, think they're better than everybody kind of people. And um, there's a lot of people that I don't feel would have done that. And the fact that you did um, just really shows how bad you wanted it back and how bad you wanted to prove to yourself that you could still do this. And I'm I'm very happy for you that uh, you – we as fans knew that, but I'm glad you you found that out for yourself. Uh, so congratulations, man. Truly mean that. I appreciate um, it, man. So let's talk about your wedding because I'm planning mine right now. Ooh, and, when is this? When is this? Um, we we were shooting for the 4th of July this year, mm-hmm. but we just bought a house. And right. we figured, hey, let's go ahead and get the house while we can. We'll push the wedding back a year. So we're shooting for July of next year, but... You just straight up, how did your wife handle that? Or your then fiance, now wife, hey, babe, I know we got to plan this wedding. I know you need my input here, here, and here, but I'm leaving for three months. How did that uh, conversation go down, man? Uh, we were actually in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 we, we were sitting in the bathtub. We had the candles lit all around us. We're hanging out. We had our drinks in our hands. Um, we Trying got, to break the news easily. Yeah, I don't know, like so. Uh, my back starting to feel good. Um, I haven't been able to move for almost two years, babe. So, uh, how do you feel about me going to going back to school? What do you mean going back to school? Like, I want to. For me, I want to know like what I can and can't do, and be good for making connections, etc. 
Uh, and and then I'll know I I can still do this for what for, know where I'm at with this. She's mm-hmm. like, okay. I'm like, That's it. I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay. Oh, as long as I'm with you, I'm good. I'm like, I love you. Uh, and, and it went down like that. So it went down a lot. I am lucky that my girl is here to some support some crap out of me and, and all of this. I'm super lucky because I've had girls that are jealous of certain things, like mm-hmm. people writing you because you're on TV. They'll write, like, send you pictures. It used to be girls, but lately it's been guys. Um, just saying, um, don't send nudes, anybody. Don't send anybody. <laughs> unsolicited nudes. Happily married man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just don't do it in general, guys. Like, <laughs> like ask, like, yo, do you want this or something? The, the confidence ask. you got to have to do something like that. I do got to give it to him, though. It's like, yes or no. There's no, like, bullshit and going through it. It's like, I don't want to get to know you, yes or no. Like, there's that. But don't not on not unsolicited because I open them up and I'm just like, hi is the conversation. Okay, I'll write back. Hi, hi, hi. Where's this conversation going? Dick pic. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, like there's that escalated quickly. Guys, don't send unsolicited news. Just saying. <laughs> Jesus, just hi, hi, dick pic. Done. Yeah, that, that <laughs> escalates. So. Marty, correct me if I'm wrong. You started wrestling in 2003, correct? And this October will be your 18th year anniversary in pro wrestling. That's right. That means I'll be wrestling for half my life now, bro. That freaks me out a little bit. I like to ask this question because I always get such an array of different answers. Um, But let's just say, hypothetically, you were able to go back in time to 2003. And you were able to give young Marty one piece of advice that you think would have really helped you throughout your road in pro wrestling. Whatever it may be, something you know now that you wish you knew then, what would that advice be to a younger uh, Martin Casals? Uh, I would tell this advice, but I don't know if, if back then I was ready to accept this advice, um, that you are enough. Um, when I originally first came into uh, professional wrestling, I had been bullied as a younger kid. And mm-hmm. then so when I came into wrestling, I just pretty much, I want to be the guy that everybody hates. And, uh, I pretty much projected all the stuff that happened to me as a bully into the persona that I was when I first started. Um, I was already athletic enough. Um, mm-hmm. So I just telling myself that I was enough really, I think would have saved me a lot of time. You never know like what you do, what you're, what you're capable of doing. If you touch your mind, believe you're capable of doing it. Um, and I think, uh, my life could have been a definitely different trajectory if I wasn't trying to face the, well, oh shit, should I do this? Mm, well, should I do this? Uh, fuck it, just do it and then find out. So that's what I would tell myself is you're good enough. Keep going. So I wish I would have known that when I was, young, when I was younger, not to get mush or nothing, but that's the information I'd give myself when I was younger. No, man, I, I love getting these different answers. You know, we always hear the blanket answers. You know, you're never going to know everything. Calm down, take criticism, take the advice. Uh, but for you to really, you know, show yourself and, and wear your heart on your sleeve with that, I truly appreciate it because it is a very personal answer. I think we all kind of struggle with those kind of things throughout life. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like asking that question is because normally the questions we get apply to so much more uh, than professional wrestling. So I truly appreciate you um, and your answer. Um, one thing I do want to get into. So guys, you've been asking about Lucha Underground. I try to stay away from the, the generally asked questions because I, I want to make it fun for my guests. Um, but there are obviously some Lucha Underground questions that we're going to get to. If you have any questions for Marty whatsoever, drop them in the comments section and we'll get to them as we go through the interview. Uh, but Marty, you've wrestled for places like Japan, Mexico, America, Germany. What are the different cultures how do the different cultures accept wrestling um is it the wrestling that's different or is it the culture and fan base that's different i think it's a culture actually i think it's a culture i love wrestling in mexico in america you you walk down like a bar row in any popular town and more than likely basketball's on Mm -hmm. in mexico professional wrestling is on and that is the coolest shit in the world you just be like hell yeah there's wrestling on tv and like in, in, in Mexican culture, everyone's wearing a mask because it's part of the culture. It's such a big deal when somebody takes off the mask. Mm-hmm. When, 
when I did shows for AAA, they would wait hours until the bus left. We would uh, we would have to like push through people to get into the bus, and then they would just be crowded around the bus. Like in, in America, that's very different. Uh, the, yeah, the, there's promotions of places like that, absolutely. But in, in in Mexico, it is built into that culture that lucha libre is a way of life, and I loved that. Germany was pretty cool too, just because it was my first time in Europe. And I, mm-hmm. I just liked seeing the different way the houses look compared to in America. Um, but Mexico, man, those fans are ecstatic, and I love it every single time. So props to Mexico and your uh, fans there. Yeah, you know, you talk about how sacred the mask is. And for me personally, I, I didn't experience Mexican culture like you have, um, but I know that that is a very sacred thing to them. And uh, here in America, I feel like it's almost taken for granted with as many people that try to rip masks and – stuff like that. So I, it would have been awesome to see. But um, one thing I want to ask you about being wrestling at Triple Mania. So can you talk to us about the differences between being at Triple Mania with 28,000 people um, as opposed to wrestling for Lucha Underground with maybe three, four, five hundred, 500 and the differences from them being, you know, spread out to being so close and personal? How does that experience change for you? Oh man, um, both of them were some of the best experiences of my life. Let's just start off with that. When I uh, the my first time wrestling at Triple Mania was twenty eight thousand people against Rey Mysterio, mm-hmm. and I I'm a WCW guy, so I grew up watching Rey Mysterio. Um, I was in there with Jeff Cobb, uh, who uh, Mil Muertes, I Ricochet, great wrestlers, uh, some great wrestlers, and so I'm like, sweet, this match, no matter what. Um, is going to go fantastic. So, um, but that amount of people, it's crazy because you just have to wait a little bit longer because in, in the Lucha Underground Temple, there was only like 500 or so people, but they were very mm-hmm. intimate and very close. Yeah. I remember Gabriel Iglesias, you know, Fluffy. Yeah. Comedian. Um, he came one time. Um, and you, <laughs> I, I do things at indie shows, uh, well, I'll, I'll like I'll go and I'll sit on the person's lap as long as they seem like they're cool with it. I sat on Fluffy's lap. I got punched in the face a couple times. I got pulled away. You don't. You can't really do that in in an arena <laughs> of twenty six thousand. Um, it's different. The the it, they're so much closer. The the reaction time is so much quicker because mm-hmm. with twenty six thousand people, you hear the reaction of the front row, then you hear the reaction of the thirty eighth row. Then you hear the reaction from that. So it's like a longer pop that you have to actually take more time in and let it settle in on and enjoy in a different way. I really enjoyed both experiences, both the intimacy of Lucha Underground and the crazy ride of 26, 28,000 people watching you every move you do. I love both experiences just as much. I, I can imagine there too. Um, they're, di- they're, they're different in their own way, but very much enjoyable. I'm a ring announcer for an independent promotion, and I love hearing that constant pop, that big pop. I don't know how I would be able to react if I just heard like that wave of pop go up and down, so I'm sure it's an experience in itself. <clears throat> um, guys, we are going to open up at this time to questions from the audience, so if you have them, go ahead and send them in. We have our first couple, um, but if you have any questions for Marty, we're going to take a few minutes and address some comments from the uh, viewer section. So the first one we have coming in is from Heel Kiefer says, my question is, what is it like feuding with Phoenix and Santos? That was really fun. Uh, I was with Melissa Santos this weekend, actually. That was really fun. Um, I I think that definitely helped my career get elevated to a different status because everyone loved Melissa and it was super easy just to stand behind her and give her some sniffings. (laughs) <laughs> um, so, um, it, I, I, I had a blast and Phoenix is just so good. Like, and his style is so different than mine. I'm a character guy. I do a lot of facials. I do a lot of stuff like mind games. Phoenix is just the acrobatic boing, 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 boing. I get to let him do all of that and kick him on the way down. So it made it super easy to tell a story. I will wrestle Phoenix every single day of every single, every single time I get, I can. So uh what was it like it was awesome it was it was awesome phoenix almost makes the things he does look effortless it's it's ridiculous effortless melissa's (laughs) freaking beautiful so now during that time everyone she was already dating cage yeah everybody already knew it so it was like this weird like 
she's Phoenix's girlfriend in the storyline, but everybody already knows she's Cage's girlfriend in real mm-hmm. life. Why don't you just put Cage and Marty against each other? Because that could be a whole money. thing. That money. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> When I went and wrestled my AEW match, people were talking about this like, oh, yeah, finally, the match we wanted to see for Melissa Santos. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can remember it. I was one of those guys on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you all on social media blowing that up every time, by the uh, way. Absolutely, man. Now, we kind of hit it this one a little bit earlier, but we have a question coming in from the Clown Prince. 1981 says, how different is Lucha Underground as opposed to wrestling in other places that you've worked? We've already addressed the crowd situation. Um, So what were some of the biggest differences? Because it feels like Lucha Underground, as far as the theatrical side of it, was so heavily scripted and so soap opera-esque, almost like Telemundo meets pro wrestling. Um, What are the differences between Lucha Underground and other places that you've worked? Um, I think a lot of places I work just the intimacy of an indie show, but the exposure of a major promotion. Um, I love the intimacy of, of independent shows, but when you did something in Lucha Underground, a lot of people saw it, and, and mm-hmm. that was awesome. Plus, the vignettes is something that wasn't done in wrestling before at that time. Um, they were straight up Hollywood act, uh, Hollywood directors coming in and like, this is the scene, here's your lines, this is it, uh, and go. And... and we would spend the scene was probably a couple minutes long and we'd spend hours filming it. Like it was Hollywood producers doing it like they do in Hollywood, which I love because I love making films. And so that's like right up my alley. And thank God, because that's where I kind of feel like I filled a kind of creepy niche while in my vignettes. Um, so that I think is the biggest difference is just the ability to do vignettes in a movie cinematic format mm-hmm. as compared to, Hey guys, it's cut to the back where we're standing here with a microphone, like very different in the way you were able to tell a story. Plus we had time travel in Lucha on the ground. I don't know yeah. how the wrestling promotion has time travel and people cutting off each other's heads. <laughs> it's fair enough, man. Um, one question I, I wanted to add, I completely just blank spaced on it. <laughs> um, oh, that's what it was. So question for you, because I, I heard I'm not privileged to any of this knowledge. I didn't work for Lucha Underground. I, I'm not close friends with anybody who is. Maybe this is the start of a friendship. Who knows? But anyway, um, I heard the, the contracts there were a little shaky. Um, do you still get like, because now you have Lucha Underground that is free to watch on a Tubi tele- television. Um, do you still get like royalties and stuff when people tune in and watch your matches? We never did. Never did? We never did. Not once. Not once did we ever get a res- residual ever. That's why we that's why some of those contracts were such shit. Because no one got residuals. We weren't we were it was a Hollywood production without paying we were paying us as wrestling promotion. So we got paid for our appearance, but never got a single cent of royalty in any of us. I imagine that caused a lot of friction between a ton of the guys in the back. Uh, once we were, it's like, oh my gosh, this is a TV show, not a wrestling show. Like we should be getting this. It it did like raise more and more questions. And there was a lot of questions at that time about what, what was actually happening as far as like contract wise, like, why can't I go wrestle for this place or this place when we're, we haven't filmed anything in four months, uh, kind of thing. Um, interesting contracts there. Yes. (laughs) I, yeah, I don't that, want – go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say I don't want to pry into it too much. Um, oh, I'm going to book. It's very pers- is personal. So, I mean, if you don't care, then I, I'll ask. But if I if I ever get to a point where you don't want to talk about it, just let me know and, and we'll move on. But I'm I've book. Give zero I've, shits. <laughs> I've never been able to talk about this with anybody. And these are some of the questions that float around, especially when AEW started, because you look at the different wrestling promotions now – And it's like everybody who was on Lucha Underground went on to do great fucking things. You know, Isaiah Swerve Scott, um, uh, Sammy Callahan, uh, Jake Hager, Johnny Mundo, just numerous people, Pentagon, all those guys. Um, What were the non-compete clauses look like on those contracts? Because I've heard so many different stories that they were really crazy long. There wasn't any. Did you guys have non-compete clauses? 90 days. Oh, it was just the 90 days. See, I heard it it was like a year. Uh, 
Now you got me thinking. Was it a year? I wasn't allowed to do any of the other TV until I got out of the contract. So, um, so I, even if you were so, on the contract and you weren't filming, you still couldn't do anything. Exactly. So like, I couldn't go do anything. Like even I remember I was talking to Ricky Mandel. He was saying like, yeah, there was some local indie show that I couldn't do because they had, they were on local TV and because it was on TV, he wasn't allowed to do that anymore. And that's what was like regular work for him. Um, I'm trying to remember now what the, I might have been wrong with that 90 days. I apologize. I wrestled a bunch of places that I didn't have too many, <laughs> too many issues. And then I got out of my contract. I want to say pretty easily compared to most people. I didn't do, do a lawsuit or anything. Um, I just kept emailing somebody over and over and over mm -hmm. and over. And they're like, finally, okay, yeah, you're out. Just, you're good. Just, you're done. I'm like, okay, just leave cool. us alone now. Yeah, exactly. The, the squeak, <laughs> what is it? The squeaky wheel gets a grease or whatever. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I, I lucked out in that aspect. So um, I don't I honestly remember now. I might, I might be wrong with that 90 days because I didn't have to run into an issue where like, oh man, I can't. I did run, in, run into issues like, hey, I can't do this with the TV, but I was still in contract, uh, not ending my contract and having to wait a time period. I got you. Um, another question going back to our audience. We have Kid Wavy Rapper says, was there anyone in Lucha Underground that you wish you would have been able to work with? Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan, Sammy Guevara. I think both of those would be a blast. I, I worked a little bit with Sammy Callahan when he came in and jumped me one time with me and my sister Mariposa. Um, but that is then we've worked with each other. And maybe I'll just release it since no one's really working at Lucha Underground anymore. But we had a fun match. Uh, uh, it was a dark match. It was like me, Sunny Kiss, uh, Chelsea Green, and uh, Sammy Callahan. And uh, we all wrestled each other, but it was a dark match. It kind of like test, it was essentially Chelsea Green's tryout match. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still have that on my YouTube, and I'm, I'm half tempted just to hit the public button, but I don't want to deal with shit if shit goes awry. But I'm really I half tempted you. to hit the, the right uh, button. But that's the closest thing I got to work on with, with Sammy Callahan. So I'd really like to get my hands on Sammy Callahan and Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara just is like one of those guys who just done so many amazing things that, like, we could tell a cool story. Sam McCallahan will be just a brutal one. We'll just beat the living shit out of each other. I'm cool with both. I like telling stories. And I want to talk a little bit about both of those because, you know, you've been featured on AEW. You, you've you had uh, some, some matches over there. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. But turning our attention to Sammy Callahan, more importantly to your character, I tune into your Twitch streams, man, and you are the nicest, happy-go-lucky guy. You're filming your workouts. You're filming – your video games, you and your wife are playing video games together. You're doing this, you're doing that. But then I go walk back and I watch this dark, sadistic, almost serial killer Dexter-esque kind of person you were um, in, in Lucha Underground. So I guess my question is, was it hard for you to get into that character being the happy-go-lucky guy that you are? Or did you find it very easy to make that transition? Very easy. I, I I like you doing crazy spontaneous stuff. So very easy just to turn myself up. And I like being a cartoon. So it's like I'm very animated anyway. That's one of the my I've been taking acting classes for years. And one of my biggest things is they're like, Your yes, an absolute just stalker. So, yes, exactly. Hey, but you all loved it just a little bit because y'all kept tuning in next week. Um, but my face is just super animated. So I'm like, <clears throat> that's where I'm gonna make my money in wrestling, but at the same time in normal film, it's not as common. And, but this is still me. I'm just, my face goes like, I got it from, I got it from my mama. I have a very <laughs> animated face. <laughs> I got a very animated face in film. I, I think taking acting classes and they always keep telling me to like, calm your face down. You're being too animated. I'm like, this is just my face guys. I can't, this is how I actually say these lines. If I were to feel like this. Um, but, I don't remember where I was going with, with that. What was the question again? Um, transitioning from I'm who you good. are here <laughs> to the character you are. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. It, the it wasn't you that are. hard. And I really am into like uh, serial killer facts and serial killer stories and like what psychology of a serial killer of what drives you to do something horrible. Mm -hmm. So 
and I know Amer- a lot of America's into this. That's why Netflix has so many, like a whole section of like documentaries of messed up making people. a murder and making a murder. Is that <laughs> Ted Bundy? I actually, um, <clears throat> Ted Bundy and Ed Gein um, are two people that I, 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 and the Joker are three people that I kind of formed Marty the Moth out. What of. a great melting pod. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, the Ted Bundy tapes on Netflix, so beautifully done. Did I love that series. Efron movie that was so good. I thought that's yeah. the one I was talking about. Oh, it, the, there was the, a series and there's an Efron movie. Oh, I didn't see the movie. I saw the or was it the movie? I may have saw a, the movie, not the series. I saw one of them, whichever one Efron was. James Efron was so good, and then it was just like a movie of this is what happened. Then there's the tapes of Ted Bundy talking about while he was in jail talking about stuff. Okay, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Um, Either way, I've watched them both, and I'm crazy curious. Like, what drives me to what drives people to? Hey, I'm petting my dog. To hey, I'm eating somebody. So, <laughs> so that's I kind of I uh, we're gonna okay going into serial killers and Lucian Underground character. I actually went up and talked to Vampiro. And I'm like, um, hey. I love making people laugh because when I was originally brought into the Lucha Underground, I was the comedic relief. I was going to make people laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was cool with that. Um, I come in and I yelled something at was a cage and Escobar and somebody else. And I got kicked and booted and made everybody laugh. Ha, ha, ha. I, I, I was the comedic relief. And I went out to the Vampiro and I told him straight up. I'm like, I love being the comedic relief. I love having a job. Um, but the Joker makes some funny jokes, some fun can make some funny people laugh, but he could also still be the king of Gotham. And I would like more of that vibe, more of vibe of like, I'm not going to be a transitional champion, more of a vibe that I could be a champion and it wouldn't seem like a joke. And so that's when me and him started collaborating with Joseph. And then that's where things got dark. And so that's where I started kidnapping sexy star. And it was the serial killer stuff that I took and we started putting into this. And then we made a, a, a fun, silly little mess. Yeah. You know, I had a vampire on the show a while back and two of the people that he spoke highly of was you and uh Pentagon um, amongst other people. Um, how vital was it having a guy like Vampiro there um, to kind of help you guys out with psychology and stuff like that. Um, how much of an asset was it to really have him there? A gigantic. Like, uh, that, it, it just put more eyes on our product. It was someone that that knew what they were doing from an in the ring standpoint. Like, there's a lot of wrestling critics out there. And they've never stepped in the wrestling ring before. Vampiro has been in the wrestling ring many a times in very high levels, high level matches. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. Um, so he's great to have, he adds value number one for people watching the product and number two, he knows what he's doing from experience. I got so. you, man. Um, now we spent a lot of time talking about Lucha Underground, obviously. Um, and, and I know this is going to be another question that you get a lot of the time. Um, or before we get off of Lucha Underground, one thing I did want to ask you, the entrance of Chelsea Green, man, that, sh- that hooked me so hard. Uh, Reclusa, I think her name was. Um, whose idea was it to bring her in because the character you played and the character she was bringing to the table, you guys meshed so well together. You already had your sister there and her Chelsea green. I mean, you guys looked unstoppable. Yeah. I, I, I had a blast working with her. Um, Taya came up to me. Why well, she goes by Frankie Monet now? Mm-hmm. Uh, Taya Valka came up to me and talked. She's like, Hey, my friend Chelsea's in town. Should I ask if she should have a match? Like, she wrestles for Impact. I'm like, Yeah, I know Chelsea. Um, and by that time in Impact, she's doing the crazy the Mar- psycho Mar- bride, psycho bride gimmick. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, she's like, I sh- should I ask? I'm like, Yeah, you should absolutely ask. Like, if your friends are there, of course, ask. Like, try to hook up all your friends with, with jobs. <laughs> um, is that and why you left came, Sledge on red? Dude, that, he's such a liar. <laughs> Sledge, you are a liar, by the way. Lies. He'd kill me if I didn't throw that jab in there. I don't. I he don't would. believe you did that, but he I just would. had to. Always try to hook up your boys. Goddamn. <laughs> um, but she said, "Should I ask him?" And then she went ask, and they said, "Hell yeah, let's do a, like a." A dark match, and that's the the, the match actually that I was talking about mm-hmm. still on my YouTube. 
And uh, they wanted to kind of see that dynamic. And it worked. Well, I was kind of the crazy gimmick. She was the crazy uh, bride gimmick. It just kind of chemistry worked, man. It was, it was fantastic and awesome work. She was down for anything. She wanted to work there. Uh, and she's just as cool as hell. Uh, so I'm always down for everything. So we're like just bouncing ideas off each other. Like what kind of messed up Harley Quinn Joker S stuff could we do? And uh, that's kind of where we, the, the platform we started on is there's, and by the way, looking into the actual comics, not the mainstream stuff, those two have done some sick shit together. Yeah. Like the Joker has done some bad stuff. I don't know if y'all seen killing joke and stuff, but the DC gets dark, uh, but it was super fun. Chelsea is, is amazing. And uh, hopefully I get to work with her some more. She's an RH right now. Yeah, man. I would, I'd love to see it. Like I said, you two, complimented each other so well and she just came in looking like she knew exactly what to do when to do it how to compliment your character i don't think there's another person they could have put with you maybe like a rosemary type character maybe um but she fit that mold so great and it, it was it was beautiful to watch um guys last two lucha underground questions that we're going to move on because he has done more than just lucha underground uh shockingly <laughs> enough um but anyway um, I'm fine. Ask what you want. I, I made the schedule for you, and my wife's not home yet. So, well, uh, I guess we're just killing time until she gets home, so uh, she can embarrass you. I, I'm telling you, I, I I tried to come up with some really good ones, and I think we're gonna have oh, a shit. lot of fun. Finish that show, okay. Oh, I don't think she's gonna make it today, unfortunately. I'm in that interview. Hey, Hill, Kev, I need to do a YouTube video with me and my wife with these questions about who knows each other. Would you be the host of my YouTube video? I would be honored to be the host of your YouTube video. Cause I don't think my wife's going to be able to make it today. She gets off of work at seven. My wife is a massage therapist and working her ass off to like make, make, make our lives. Awesome. I, I am working my ass off as well. Um, but like things were so much less scary when I was a stockbroker. You had to check every single week that that came in. And then when you try to chase your dreams, it is scary as fuck. So, Dude, I, so happy. So I was, happy. I was a detective and I left to be a full-time streamer. A detective? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm a state certified police officer. I just don't go to work anymore. That is awesome. Still certified. I still do everything I have to do to keep my certification. I just don't go to work. Um, I, but I'd maintain my certification, you know, that backup plan, but trust me, I know exactly what you're talking about. Maybe not to the extent, um, of being a stockbroker as to pro wrestling, but trying to pursue this, uh, career of podcasting. I feel your pain. Um, question from kid wavy rapper says if Lucha underground returned, would you go back? Now there's been a lot of speculation about it coming back. I, I don't know. I've seen all the Hefe's promo and, uh, stuff like that. If it did come back, would you be interested in going back? And what are your thoughts about it possibly coming back? I would absolutely go back. Depends on actually who's doing it, but I would absolutely be interested in looking at it. Absolutely, I'd want to go back. Um, it's obviously not going to be the same. The whole roster is somewhere else doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would absolutely want to go back. I heard MLW is doing their Detective Hill. Yes! I, I, I tried to be a fair. I was a fair one. <laughs> Or as fair as I could be. And yes, technically right now I am at work. I actually went and did the police test. I went and did the physical. I went all the way to the interview and they all stared at me like this. And I was worried about it. I'm like, if I had that much power, I'd pull over all my friends and be a dick. I'd have like, I, I in my head, I was thinking like, poor, like, hey, ladies, you were going too fast. You better get out of the ticket. Um, <laughs> like, and I, and, and I, and I don't want to give myself that kind of stuff. Ironically, man, ironically, you get accused of doing it so much. You'll never even think about actually doing it. <laughs> like I you get accused. It. I was three weeks on the job, three weeks on the job, fresh out of the Academy, just out of training in my own car. Like finally in my own car, I'm feeling like I'm King of the road. I, I got the, the, the world is, my oyster, I'm ready to go. I get called into the chief's office, and I'm like, what the hell is going What did I do? I can't possibly getting be getting fired yet. And sure enough, there was a complaint where luckily I had my body camera on, and um, he already knew it was false because he watched the body camera footage. He just wanted wow. to let me know and, and kind of give me pointers on how to be more careful and 
stuff like that, you know, basically critiquing me after. Um, but yeah, man, you get accused of doing it so much. You'll never even think about actually doing it. It's a scary, it's a scary thing being in the public eye and you're in the public eye. Absolutely. If you're wearing a, a police uniform, you're definitely in the public eye, especially in the last couple of years. Uh, it's one of those things where like, and I'm not trying to cut you off. It's one of those things where like, if I worked at McDonald's and I offended you, you wouldn't be, oh, I'm going to call your boss. I, I need, I need where you work. If I worked at Walmart, you wouldn't give a shit. If I do anything wrong at all to anybody, badge number, name, agency, this, that, and, that, and it just, I love it. I love being a public servant. I was in the military before being a police officer. Um, I absolutely love it, but this is definitely what I want to do with my life. Hell yeah. This, I think I, I've been, I just got it back from Vegas and I was talking about, I, I, I have some opportunities. I may end up moving me to Vegas and I, and I don't hate that idea at all. My life in Vegas would be awesome. Um, so I kind of want to make that happen, but it just got me thinking about like, I'm going to keep wrestling for a couple of years for several more. I have lots of years left of wrestling, by the way. You ain't going nowhere. You're stuck with this face for a while. Uh, <laughs> and just someone say, well, I'm right. Yes, Alizé representing. Um, a proud member of the Heel Kevin Army, Alizé. She knows I, I actually used to work for Walmart, too. I had a lot of jobs. But, yes, I did say Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, oh, yeah. Moving to Vegas. What I'm thinking about is uh, moving to Vegas and actually streaming. After, Vegas, streaming is something with such an awesome community. Um, yeah, last time Radcore went to Vegas with me, he went to the hospital. <laughs> um, that's not a joke. You really did. Um, but uh, yeah, so one went to the okay, let's see, what was it? One went to the hospital and one went to AA up for my bachelor party. Just saying, I love you both. I'm not gonna say any names, but somebody went to the hospital and somebody went to AA after my bachelor party. Just saying, step up your games. Um, no, just no. Um, but I, I just think like streaming is so fun and the community is so fun, and being able to do anything is so fun. I've streamed my drive. These guys have helped me drive from Atlanta to Utah. That was a 28 hour drive. That sucked, but that felt so much shorter because of being able to stream and talk mm -hmm. with these people. And then I'm like, guys, I'm in Missouri. I'm tired. I can't drive anymore. <laughs> Do you guys know of a hotel? And then like, yo, 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 I, I Google mapped a hotel here. You can stay here. And, and there's just so helpful that I'm like, I can do anything from playing games. I painted my house on stream before. I have a community of awesome people. I just got to hang out with. I'm going to stream for the rest of my life. Dude, Long you build short. you build such an amazing community. And I remember when we bought this house, our, our air conditioner went out and um, <clears throat> I'm in a oh, separate studio. And I was kind of talking to you about on, the, on, on the chat, not expecting anything by no means that I expect, but just the donations and the love and the support. Hey, Here's a good company. Hey, try getting this air conditioner. This one has great reviews and here's a donation to help you out. And here's bits to help you out. And it's such a fantastic community of people. And you really get the greatest thing about streaming is you get to come in contact with people that you would have never met any other way. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Like, and I even had a few of my like radcores in chat here. I'm seeing, I got your chat here above. Hi chat. I'm seeing you all. King Rick is a saint. Um, I have met these people. And a few of my people from my bachelor party, a few of them came to actual my bachelor party. And my friend from high school doesn't get streaming. So he's like, he got wasted. And he's like, why are these people here? Like, <clears throat> they see you on the internet. I'm like, yeah. And I talk to them every single freaking day. I mm -hmm. haven't talked to you in years, man. I talk to them every single day. I'm closer with them than I am with you, kind of, because I know what they're doing. Like, everything that's happening in their life. Like, you make a huge community out of this. To be honest, um, and, and another thing, cool thing about streaming and wrestling is just like the effect you have on people. So I wanted to prove to myself by going to the Nightmare Factory that of what I can, can and can't do in the wrestling ring. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that inspired some people like, hey, I could get in shape. And I, so I've had a bunch of people in my community lose a bunch of shape. So I'm here while streaming, what's up, Sean Dell? How you doing? Um, I had a lot, a lot of people get in shape. I had a lot of people actually gift and donate. Like my, my community paid for my nightmare factory trip. Damn near. So mm -hmm. like, big shout out to the people here on Twitch, you people who help support independent pro wrestling and guys like 
me and Hill Kevin here with your awesome subs and donations and, and just by being here in chat, giving us something to, to chat and go with, uh, it's much appreciated. And, and I, I will stream for the rest of my life. It always blows my mind that, you know, right now we have uh, 72 people in here watching. We're on three different platforms. My uh, Twitch, you're hosting, and then we have uh, two YouTube pages. Um, but it always blows my mind that even one person – wants to tune in and listen to me talk. And then this past Monday night, cause I stream all wrestling. We hit three hype trains in one stream. Damn. Like how, what I, it always blows me away that, that people feel the need to do that. And it, it's very humbling. It's a very, very humbling experience. Um, but we can sit here and talk about streaming all day long. Something we're both truly passionate about. Thanks. Um, I do want to get into a little bit of your, your um, <clears throat> tough enough run, and then we got some some questions about maybe some Britt Baker heat that you may have had recently um, that I saw surfing around on the internet. Um, but let's get to tough enough first. So I'm okay. kind of going to sum up all this and then just get your take on whatever you want to talk about. Um, I know you're on tough enough. I know you made it very very far into tough enough. You were one of the standouts. Unfortunately, you suffer or unfortunately you suffered a broken ankle. Um, so getting as far as you did into that journey and getting the eyes on you and the relationship that you developed with Stone Cold and all that other stuff, you know, not a bad person to have connections with. No, um, no. But going through all that and then breaking your ankle, kind of talk to us about your mental, you know, the mental side of it and, and just everything you went through leading up to your injury and then realizing that you weren't going to be able to finish tough enough. I uh, <laughs> remember when I talked about being uh, – and I hate to go back back to this, but uh, remember when I talked about getting bullied as a kid? Yeah. Um, when I went to Tough Enough, that was my first time in my wrestling career. By that time, I wrestled for like seven years. But for the first five years of it, um, I didn't know there was an independent wrestling scene. So, like, there was this professional wrestling company out here in Utah that just started wrestling, and they didn't tell me, like, hey – there's an independent wrestling scene out here in Colorado, out here in California. There's you make a name for yourself and you get higher in the ranks to make it on TV. That was, I didn't know that. So for a while I was doing all my matches here in Salt Lake city once a, a month. And it was just, pfft. so those first five years, I don't even think count, but I got a shit ton of practice. Um, I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it is what did, it is. It's just what did, no, no, I'm not even laughing at what you were saying. I'm listening to everything you're saying. But this comment just threw me for a freaking loop. <laughs> you see the comment? I do. I did. I do. Oh, um, happiness and sunshine is to answer your question. <laughs> so anyway, getting back into your run with Tough Enough and being bullied and stuff like that, I apologize for cutting you off. That's just the most random question that's ever been asked on my show. Welcome to my stream and my chat, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, tough enough, actually, when I started wrestling, I started winning some things. Like, I I knew I was good in Utah, but I didn't fully understand. Like, I was just good at wrestling, not just good in wrestling. Like, I was good, not just good in Utah. I was good at wrestling. So, mm -hmm. like, I started winning all this stuff and tough enough. I'm like, you know what? I could actually freaking be a wrestler for a living if i win this i could get a wwe contract and be one of the top in the world and i'm kicking ass right now so this mm -hmm. is awesome so that was a huge confidence boost for me to be honest to like going f changing of my attitude which needed to happen which needed to happen and then shortly after that lightning struck and my my glass ankle happened and you know the story from there, but that was something that needed to happen for me to change my mentality on my perception of myself, which is why I said, if I was to ever go back, I would say you are enough, et cetera. Cause what if I already went to tough enough knowing I was, I was, I, I was awesome at wrestling. Like your brain is smart. It is way more capable than you think. Um, no. but tough enough was fun. Um, Great experience. I'm trying to remember what I was trying to say about it. Uh, it. And it was the first time that I was able to 
not be working because I, I was working as a stock poker at that time. It was my first time I was able to take the take work off and be paid to be a professional wrestler. And I thought that was cool as hell. And so um I, that, that that was an awesome experience for me. So tough, tough enough, awesome thing, awesome start to a career. Uh that <clears throat> got a lot more to it to it. <laughs> um, you know, coming out of that, even though you you uh did have to withdraw due to injury. Yeah. Um I believe I heard you talk about you developed a relationship with Steve Austin where um, he would help you with critiquing your matches and stuff like that. Growing up a wrestling fan and seeing the things that this man has done throughout the business, what is it like knowing that, you know, you were, even though you didn't win, you know, some people say that wins and losses don't really matter, but the relationships that you build on this journey, having that relationship with him has got to feel pretty good. Absolutely. Um, and just knowing how genuine he is about how he feels about wrestling. Uh, and it feels pretty good. Like texting people for my wedding uh, to come down and I invite him to my wedding straight up. Like shoot your <laughs> shot, right? You um, miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Bam. See, there you go. And so I was going to miss that shot. So I shot it. Um, well, I'm sorry. I wasn't going to not take that shot. So I shot it and missed, but I shot it. Uh, but he texts me back. He's like, I'm like, Hey man, I'm getting married on this day. If you're, if you're down, um, he's like, I, I would love to, but I'm, I'm buying a house over in Nevada right now. And I just can't. So I appreciate the invite though, by the way, I've done this a few times. So I hear this is your first, make sure it's, uh, it's your last. I've done this a few times. I'm like, okay, Stone Cold said so. Make this the first and only. Done. Stone Cold said so. That's damn right. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, at but, least at least he didn't leave you on red like somebody did to my boy Sledge. Yeah, yeah. Who would do that? What a kind of dick would do that? <laughs> um, so I thought this was very, very, very interesting. Um, as far as you know, we hinted at you being on AEW Dark. I do want to get into that because you face some really great talent. You know, uh, we talked about, you know, the anticipation of you and Brian Cage. You faced off against Matt Seidel, Jungle Boy, who I personally believe is the future of the business as far as baby faces go. The, the dude's amazing. Um, but before we get into that, I kind of saw this little bit of heat, or, or not really heat, but, you know, fans kind of prodding at that professional wrestling machine, trying to create heat when there's not. Was there any truth to you and Britt Baker having heat about you, you know, using the, the drag from the mouth, the mandible claw type thing, uh, whenever you would drag your opponents? None whatsoever. Me and Brittany are cool as fuck with each other. Like Completely she, false. Completely false. The, the, uh, where that came from is because I went and did an interview with Wrestling Inc. And what I said is one of the critiques that uh, Tony Khan gave me as he was running backwards, because he's always been so hands-on, mm -hmm. was, hey, you did a thing, and and the thing that I do is I put my hand in people's mouths and drag them like a dead body. Okay. And that was from that serial killer stuff I did in Lucha Underground. He's like, just be aware, mouth stuff is kind of also Britt Baker stuff, so be careful with that. He didn't tell me to change it. He just said, be careful with that. So I'm like, cool. So I changed it up to do a neck thing. That's all. There, there, there was zero heat. I hadn't even talked to Brittany about it at all or anything. Uh, like, we're a hundred percent totally cool. And there, I, 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 there was never even a, a conversation with me and Brittany that's like nothing like that. It's just uh, the critique that Tony gave me to make sure that I stick out in his product. So I'm definitely not going to hate on a critique from the man who owns the company. And you know, that's one of the examples of like I said. Um, wrestling fans, when there's lack of drama, they want to create that drama. Um, so I'm glad that there was no heat there, and I'm glad you can clear that up. Um, I don't think I'm blessed, and sorry to interrupt you. No, go I, ahead. This is your show. I, and maybe I'm uh, – this is your show, brother. Um, maybe uh, maybe I'm wrong, but, like, I just feel like if you treat people nice, like, people should treat you back, nice back. And so I just try to treat everyone nice, and, like, I don't think – I have heat with anybody in the wrestling industry. If they have heat with, oh, actually, okay. If if they have heat with me, then that's their hold issue. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. It, it seems like you you might have just remembered somebody you had heat with. I don't have heat with them. They have heat. I think they have heat with me, and that's and I'm not at AAA for a reason. Um, but I'm not going to go into that because I'd like to have AAA again. So oh, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Um, but but 
simple things like he from a simple like it can be resolved so quickly if you just call each other. I said this. You heard this. It doesn't line up. Call each other. Heat squashed. Done. Simple conversations. World wars could be solved sometimes with simple conversations. But whatever. I don't I don't feel like I have heat with anybody, but if they have heat with me, then that's their prerogative. I don't care if people love or hate me anymore. That is one thing I definitely learned um, is that people, you're not going to be able to please everybody. And then no matter how good you do, um, someone's going to always say you're the shits. Um, after Tough Enough, I had so many people saying great things, and then I had also uh, messages saying, I hope you and Leslie die of cancer. I'm like, what does my, my, my girlfriend have to do with any of this? And why do I have to die of cancer for going for a dream? <laughs> so don't give a shit whatever people say. Just 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 be sure of yourself, for hell's sake. You know, Alan, I- Alan Iverson said it best. In this life, there's going to be a million people that love you and two million that hate you. Take mm. care of the million that love you, and the rest can go to hell. Exactly. And the sad thing is, especially in the day of social media is um, I'll put a post on there of social media. All these people say such nice things about the posts. And there's those, those like couple assholes that come in and be like, yeah, they, this guy looks fat as shit. And those are the ones that will try and stay in your head. And if you mm-hmm. let that happen, that's very easy to let that happen. Those are the ones that will stay in your head. You're like, I don't feel like I, I've been eating right and stuff like that. That'll stick in your head versus all those 50 people saying how good you look and whatever, all the compliments, the negative shit sticks in your head. Don't, don't fall into the trap. And and see, going back to what you said, you know, about heat can be squashed with just talking to each other. Yeah. I feel like where we're at now in, 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 in the modern day and everything that we have, you know, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, we are more accessible to each other than we have ever been ever at any point in time in history, but people are still afraid to talk to each other. Case in point, you know, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, get you on the show or it would have been a lot harder to do so instead of just popping up in your Twitch channel. Hey man, do you want to come on the show sometime? I'd really love to have you. But as easy as it is to talk to people, people are afraid to freaking talk to people. It it, it blows my mind. Right. And, and like, if you want, like, especially in the world where it's so easy to connect to people, if you want something, just go get it. Like you wanted this interview, you came on here and, and just wrote it to him in my chat and said, let's do this. And now we're doing this. Like, this is a world where you could pretty much have anything you want sent to you or on the internet. The internet has created so much availability for everything, so much ability to connect with everybody in the world. I have people in my chat and there's probably people in this chat. I'm curious, actually, in this chat, where are all of you from? Guys, let's have, our, ch- let's have ourselves a roll call. Everybody drop where you're from. We'll throw as many as we can up on the screen. Personally, I'm in Georgia, just above the Florida line. Um, wherever I you guys known are- that when I was there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm about four hours from Atlanta. Oh, oh yeah, about okay, four okay. hours from Atlanta. But guys, drop where you're from. Let's let Marty continue, and I'll throw up some of these as much as we can. Look at this: Arizona, Wisconsin, Massachusetts, Iowa, Texas. Man, look at like there's Florida. All these places of people you can connect with that you can essentially have friends with anywhere you, especially in the world with wrestling. All these places probably. Now, out of all these places that you guys are at, how many of you guys have a professional wrestling area near you that Hill Kevin could go do a commentary on or that I could go do a wrestling on? The internet is so, makes things so available that Hill Kevin and I can have friends in Florida, Texas, Iowa, California, Alabama, Allentown, Miss Massachusetts, everywhere, Salt Lake City, Utah, rocking it out, Shondell. I used to live with Shondell, by the way. Um, now I got a story that- about Salt Lake City, Utah when you're done. Oh, do tell, do tell. Oh, it's it's nothing bad, but uh, it's going to be something that we both really enjoy. First off, thank you for noticing my beautiful array that I I put a lot of work into this. Like, this isn't just throwing stuff up here. I had to make sure everything faced the camera. The camera could see everything. But anyway, September 18th, Salt Lake City, Utah, two Power Rangers are going to step into an MMA cage, and they are going to fight to the death. Not really the death, but knockout or submission. Um, Marty, the Power Ranger belt's here. Oh, yeah. Are we going to reveal? Has it been revealed? I can't show it, but I can show you when the interview's done. What a dick tease. Do you see this guy? You see this guy? He captures you. He captures your attention. The, cu- just the customer's request. The customer's request. 
I get it. I get it. It's business. It's business. Sledge has, done, Sledge has done the same thing to me. Sledge ordered a belt from me, and he's got me under lock and freaking key. Sledge is an asshole. That's why you left him on red? <laughs> no, that's, he faked a knee injury so during a wrestling match, and, and it pissed me off. Because <laughs> he's like, shit, he worked so hard to get an ROH contract. Then he faked a knee injury, and I'm like, it's my wedding week. I don't even really want to – didn't even want to wrestle – but I'm like, when the hell am I going to wrestle Sledge? So we bring, bring, he comes in, and then he fakes a knee injury, and I'm like, oh shit! Like as a friend, he's my dear friend, I've known him for years, but we've never worked with each other. Like he went down with a knee injury, and I'm like, oh, there goes his ROH stuff. He was just about to have all his ROH stuff like blow up, and then he comes to his friend's wedding and fucks himself up. Uh, so no, Sledge is an asshole, but I love you too, Sledge. Alizé says we need Marty and RPW. That's the company that I work for based out of Fort Myers, Florida. Who um, never been? Love to break that virginity. Oh, it's such a great time. We just had our six-year anniversary show. Um, a guy that you may be familiar with, Ryzen. Rob! Yeah, a good buddy of mine. Um, we got it actually right here. I got these for giveaways. They're autographed posters from the show. Oh, yeah, Ryzen actually yeah, yeah. took the uh, heavyweight title that night. So a uh, shout out to Rob Ryzen on becoming the uh, real pro wrestling top crown champion. A belt I designed, by the way, just shameless plug. I've been my my community bought this really cool belt for me. It was the Gift of the Gods Championship, and uh, they had it had it signed. I don't know how they did it, but I was at AEW, and then Cage is like, "Hey, I need to give you something, but you can't open it." I'm like, "What?" It's like, "Yeah, you have to send it." To, to Radcore. I'm like, wait. So I, why do I have to send stuff to to somebody else when I can't see what's inside of it? Just don't worry about it. Well, yeah, I'm worried about it. What am I? What, am I sending a bomb or something? Like, I don't freaking know what's on there. It has my name on it. Anyway, I keep seeing Martin versus Monstar. Do I? Do I need are to you fight familiar? Are you familiar guy? with Zach Monstar? I I'm not. Do I need to be fighting this guy? I'm for it. Well, he is a massive he's massively over in the independent scene of florida he's actually uh rob risen's tag partner the team known as satanic panic a six foot five tatted up walking demon um it's great dude uh you two would make absolute magic in the ring I, i'm i'm for it but Anyone uh I definitely got in the ring with before i want to be in the ring with definitely got to like look up some zach monstar i'm all for it let's make it happen buddy <laughs> rpw um, here i come don't don't tease us like that marty don't, don't be let, let me Florida be the heel, okay? December. I will be heel. I will be in December in Orlando in December the first and second. And uh, I asked Ryzen what's out there, and I, I don't know what's all out there in the so much. Area. So much. I figured there would be, being where all the wrestling rooms like it are. Yeah. Um, so I work for Real Pro Wrestling. There's another company that I do social media stuff for, Riot Pro Wrestling. There's another one, Platinum Pro, that just messaged me wanting me to do stuff as far as ring announcing down there. Um, huge, huge wrestling community. Uh, the Ascension, formerly known as the Ascension, the Awakening now. You got Jay Lethal School. So much stuff going on down here, man. You got to make it down. Now, I, I would love to. I'm gonna. My friend's getting married down in Disney World. And so I'm going to go up there and uh, be the flower boy. They want well, me to be the flower boy and pull it out of my pocket. If at all possible, if at all possible, we'll, we'll have to talk, work the logistics out. But Let's you do said it. you're going to be down here the first and the second. Fort Myers from Orlando is about a two and a half hour drive. Okay. I'll come pick you up myself. Okay. Um, we're, we'll, we'll figure this out. We'll talk logistics a little bit later. I'd, I'd love to see it, man. You I've been such see a, a fan of yours for a long with time. Hill, Kevin and Marty would live together. You Just might a road, see a stream. Road trip in it. I road love trip. it. I love it. Marty, I, I do want to be respectful of your time, man. I did have a – I guess we'll save these questions for a better time. I'd be more than happy to come on your YouTube channel, host it. Um, it actually took a lot to figure out these questions because I didn't want to make them too easy. I didn't want to make them too easy. <laughs> the, fir the first round is your basic stuff, but when it gets to the, the third and fourth round, and this will just give me time to come up with some more, uh, stuff, some more content for your YouTube channel. But before we get out of here, uh, Marty – I, I want to say thank you for coming on here and donating your time and being so gracious with your answers. Is there anything that you want to put over, talk about, or anything like that before we get out of here? 
Yeah, absolutely. Guys, uh, follow me on my Twitch channel like I was telling Kevin here. Um, I'm going to be wrestling for quite a few years, but I'm going to be streaming for the rest of my life. It's been too fun to hang out with people from all across the world. And that gives me friends to go visit. Hey, if I ever go to Greece, there's somebody I, I know. If I ever go to Mexico, I, I know this person. Like, there's friends everywhere in the world. So follow me on my Twitch channel. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Martin Casals. Go to my uh, web page, martincasals.com. I built it. It was a pain in the ass. I didn't know how to build websites until 2020. So thanks, 2020, for making me learn on YouTube. Um, I'm coming out with a fitness line. If you guys are into working out, I'm not. I absolutely. And granted, I stream my workouts every Monday through Friday. Can, can, does, that, does that work? I fucking hate <laughs> working out. I don't know if this beep works. No, does I this, hear it. I hear, you hear it. Okay. Guys, I, I put up the banner so you working. can see the proper spelling of Martin Casals right here because uh, a lot of people get it wrong, but that's the proper spelling, martincasals.com, twitch.tv slash uh, Martin Uh Marty, please continue. Uh, yeah, um, I'm coming out with a fitness line because I hate working out, but I know I have to for what I want in my life. And I feel like a lot of people feel that where, frick, I hate working out, but – I want to be healthy or I want to get the girl of my dreams or, Hey, I want, I, I don't want to do this last day of work, but I also want a paycheck so I can pay for my, uh, this ring for my wife or whatever. People do things they don't want to do because they have to. And so I'm going to build that, uh, fitness clothing line around that where I hate working out and then we're going to do a bunch of fitness clothing and stuff like that. So it's going to be fun. We're still in the beginning of launching that right now. I have a fitness or um, a production company that's going to be coming out with a film for next year. Pretty stoked about that. Um, I'm doing a lot of things that doesn't involve me in spandex, but a lot of things and doing other things that I love, such as wrestling. Uh, me and always smoking down here. We're going to be playing some uh, Mario Kart. Again, back to streaming. Like uh, I'm doing a lot of things on my Twitch and and, and making film that I really enjoy doing is so if you, if you like anything about film wrestling or just me doing stupid shit, come check out my stuff. Everything's at Martin Casals um, on every social media. And they mostly all have a blue check except for here in YouTube. Go check out my YouTube. There's a video that comes out every single Wednesday. You usually have a Twitch clip or my vlogs. Uh, this one is going to have the vlog from me going to Las Vegas. I hung out with Rob Van Dam, Sabu, uh, Joy Janela, uh, Katie Forbes, just go check out my stream. You'll see it. You'll see it all. Anyways, go check out all my stuff. Check out my everything at MarcusHouse.com. Just go do it. So, guys, this has been this week's episode of The War Room with Marty the Moth, the House of Casaus leader himself. Make sure you guys go follow him on all of his platforms. Martin Casaus everywhere. Um, but, guys, thank you so much for tuning in this interview. Marty, thank you for the raid. Uh, guys, quick update on what we have going here on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash yo Kevin. Uh, before we get out of here, so as most of you know, I do work for a belt making company. We make custom and replica championship belts. Right now, my Twitch account is at 988 followers. When we hit 1,000 followers, so literally 12 people away, there are, there are more than 60 people in here. We can hit that right now. Once we hit 1,000 followers, four of you are going to win an absolutely free championship belt from me. Uh, we have one is going to be a winner's choice where they can pick whatever they want. One is donated from a friend of mine. We have the TNT Championship and the NWA 10 pounds of gold. Four lucky people are going to win an absolutely free championship belt. Hit that follow button. Tell your friends the faster we get to 1,000, the faster we start having giveaways. We have giveaways all the time, action figures, merch, all that good stuff. Drop a um, follow now. You're all here. Just drop a follow <laughs> on my channel and right now. The follow button's right there. Just hit it. Just hit it right now on Hill Kevin's. Go to my stream, Martin Casals. Hit the follow button and hang out with me and play games with us and win some belts. It take thirty seconds. Take less than thirty seconds. Less than thirty seconds. Um, but with that being said, I do want to say thank you one more time to Marty, and it means a lot that you noticed all of this stuff. By the way, the Red Ranger is the best Ranger. I wore this shirt just for you. No, sir. I popped for the shirt in my head when I when you first came on. But <laughs> I lies, the Green Ranger. Yeah, the Green Ranger is still making movies about Power Rangers. The Red Ranger is gone. Marty, quick question: How many fights have the Power Rangers won without the Green Ranger? A bunch. How many have they won without the Red Ranger? None. Ooh, yeah, that's what I thought. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And if you use the Kimber, if you use the Kimberly argument, my retort to that is: this is a ass kicking contest, not a ass getting 
contest. He might win in certain areas, but the Red Ranger is the best Ranger. This Team is Red a badass Ranger. contest. And in a badass contest, the Green Ranger takes the cake by far. So much that there's another movie coming out. The White Dragon. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm stoked for that. 200 helmets were sold. All of them t uh, movie worn. He made sure he changed. He changed like helmets every like 30 minutes to make sure they all were worn in the movie. Uh, but they went for stupid prices. But anyway, Marty, if I can have just one more second of your time after the live feed ends, I would really appreciate it. Um, but guys, this has been this week's episode of The War Room. We will have our SmackDown and Rampage watch along tomorrow. But coming up this Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern, an hour before Raw, we will have a special Monday night edition of The War Room where I will be sitting down with former Ascension member Connor, now known as Big Con of The Awakening, uh, former Ascension tag team member in NXT, still currently one half of the longest reigning NXT tag team champions. So if that's an interview you want to be a part of, make sure you tune in this Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Much like this one, we will be taking viewer questions. So if there's any questions you want to know, pop in, ask your questions, and we will get to them. Uh, Marty, thank you so much. And like I said, just one more second after the live feed ends. Truly, truly appreciate it. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys at the next one.